Hi, and I'm back, the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is here to talk about some other things. The Tarot. What is the Tarot? I am no expert on the Tarot. I won't pretend to be an expert on the Tarot. I um, do not know all of the history of the Tarot. I don't. Um, and I'm saying that not just as a character, but so that you understand that I am not the complete expert. I am here to tell a story of the Tarot the way I think the Queen of Swords would see the Tarot. And I'm going to start with the Major Arcana and we'll take it from there. So um, let's get back into character. Here she is, Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords. Where does it start? And how does it make any sense at all that the Fool is going to walk over to a cliff and dangle and play with his dog and do all these things. Where is the thought? Where is the thought there? Now they tell me that sometimes it's good not to think, that it's good to just begin a project and sometimes when you think too hard that you lose that sense of, you know, childlike behavior. Well, Look, I've been a child, been there, done that, and um, quite frankly, I think he is named appropriate for being the fool. He just wants to go off, start new things without having a plan, and move on, and it literally just, I don't get it. I mean, I, I have seen too much heartache to understand how it's okay to not have a plan. I just don't. But the magician, now the magician, he's got it going on. He's got all the tools. Yeah, he even has a sword like mine, which is the best tool, by the way. It cuts right through air. He's got them all. He, he can do whatever he wants. Think about that. Think about having all the tools. Think about having the knowledge, the intellect. Think about having the emotion and think about having the fiery attitude of a wand and at the same time be down to earth and be able to change your persona at any time and to help someone by giving them the pinnacle when they need it or the sword when they need it. That man, he's got it. Anytime you're the magician and you can say, I'm the magician and I have all the tools, hands up to you. Because to me that makes sense. That makes complete sense. And, you know, going into the High Priestess, she's an awesome lady. I mean, I see her, not only does she think, and does she focus, and not only is she smart and, and intellectually uh, just so round, but she's so quiet about it. She knows what she knows, but she doesn't have to brag about it, you know? She just knows. How cool to be that way, you know, you just go through life knowing and knowing things, your intuition and, and trusting your intuition. You know, I, I, I trust my intellect, I trust my knowledge, I trust what I know, but she trusts her gut and that, that I do admire as well. Um, not that I would ever give up my sword for anything, but to be able to trust yourself as much as she does and trust that, that that gut feeling is just a, a marvelous way to begin. Which leads us to the Empress, another woman. <laughs> Seems like women run the tarot, don't they? <laughs> and the Empress certainly does. I think, honestly, I'm jealous of the Empress. You know, because, not because she's smarter than me, because not very many people are smarter than me, to be quite honest with you, but she is the woman, she's the nurturer, she's the mom, she's she's the one everyone needs to go to when they need help. Um, she's she's the one that you want to be when you want to help somebody as well. You, you want to be able to take her persona on, you want to be able to be the nurturer and, and be the, the guiding force and be that person that is, you know, leading people into comfort and all of those wonderful things. The Empress is a wonderful person to me. And she brings a lot to the table. Um, she brings birth. She brings new life. 
she also nurtures that, which is astounding. You know, it's one thing to bring life into the world, but it's a whole nother thing to be able to really embrace and nurture that new life to grow and grow the way it should. And the emperor, hmm, what about the emperor? Well, I'll tell you personally, I have some issues with the emperor. You know, he needs all that control and stuff. But if you look at it on an intellectual basis, of course, the emperor, we do need people like the emperor. We do need people to take control. We do need people to set boundaries. We need those black and white, um, follow the rule, and this is the way things are type people. We need those people around us. We need those people to draw the line sometimes. Um, we can't always live in a sword world um, or a cup world by that matter, but we just can't. Um, the emperor reminds us that to follow the rules, and the rules are there for a reason. They're not just there for fun. Uh, certainly not for fun. I'll tell you that. They're not there for fun. Now when we get to uh, the lovely, lovely, lovely um, Hierophant. Now, I kind of find that interesting. Now, the way I look at the Hierophant, because of all of these sharp things I have, I look at the Hierophant and say, he's all about learning. And that's what I see when I see him. And when he comes up and um, I get to interact with the Hierophant, I, I interact with the fact that He's either calling for us to be students or calling for us to be teachers. And there is nothing wrong for a teacher to be a student as well. So those, those two things go hand in hand. If you aren't willing to learn, then how the hell can, heck can you teach? You can't. You know, you have to know how to learn to be able to give that knowledge forward. And how wonderful is that? He represents so many other things as well. He, I mean, he really does. Um, uh, but being the intellectual person I am, I don't always draw on faith or um, things of that nature. I am more, much more apt to look at the true knowledge of things and the true intellect of things. And, and the Hierophant is exactly that. He's our, he's our teacher and he calls on us to be students. The um, brings us into the lovers. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. The lovers. What does that really mean? In my world, my lover, excuse me, is someone that I can talk to and relate to intellectually. That's all I care about. The rest, not so much. I'm not. <laughs> love, what's love? What's love got to do with it? You know, as Tina Turner would say, you know, you... But, for other people out there, the lovers are about union and you unity in general, not just about lovers in the sense of relationships and love relationships. It's the sense of relationships in their entirety. So when the lovers comes up, it, it means a lot of different things. And, and, and yes, to me, um, my relationships as, as a sword, I, um, I want to be intellectual. I want people to, that I can talk to and relate to and um, I feel like are on the same intellectual level that I am. And at the same time, I do as well, being a human, I need to have companionship as well as anything. So, the lovers. <laughs> we all want to have lovers, right, in our life. Lovers, lovers, lovers. <laughs> However, sometimes the lovers can trip us up as well. I mean, they also can hold us bondage and hold us prisoner and, and all of those good things that not good things that um, come around with having a partner and someone in your life. So be very careful on who you choose as your lover because your lover can keep you down or bring you up your choice, you know? That's very true. And and being in love kind of, you know, I'm not a I'm not a gooey type person that I am, but it kind of makes you feel like moving moving forward, which brings us right into the chariot. We could just move on and, and move forward. And what does that what does the chariot look like? Oh my gosh, so I love the chariot because I can hold my sword and ride the chariot. But I love the chariot because it's got a lot of energy and it, it really just moves and it goes and it it speaks to us as um, getting somewhere quickly 
we have to kind of watch it because we're going so fast we don't know if we hit a rock, will we tumble, if we accidentally take the wrong path, will we overturn, um, what will happen? That's part of the fun of the chariot, we don't know what's going to happen. Now, even though I'm an intellect, I do have a sense of adventure in that respect that I like to get my adrenaline up as well and that's what I feel like the chariot really stands for is really getting that, that adrenaline flowing and knowing that you're successful and feeling success and having that power because the chariot is also raw power, right? It's just the, the, the horses and whatever's drawing those are so powerful. They're so powerful. And then strength. Now I also admire this woman. She makes me feel a lot like the Empress does. But the, the thing that I admire most about this woman is that she's proof solid that you can be as strong as anyone, but it doesn't take brute strength but to be strong. Strength comes from within, and strength is um, being able to uh, attack a day that's not an easy day, um, attack a life that's not an easy life. It's uh, the strength that she brings is that strength that, yes, yeah, she can tame the lion. She's just a, a, a woman and, and she doesn't have a lot of brute strength, but she has that, that inner strength. The, the strength that when you don't know what the day is going to bring and you still get out of bed, that kind of strength. When the, and when I say that, I mean some people have a really hard time getting out of bed because their day may not be so good. Uh, the days that you spend in the hospital sick and you still get out of bed, th those are, that's, that's strength. That's strength to um, want to keep going and be, keep moving on. Strength is being able to um, hold your child's hand when, they, when they're crying. Th those are important strengths to me. I mean, as far as what I see and um, look at, at the tarot and the tarot women, um, we're all, the tarot women are, are wonderful women and um, I can't wait to um, meet more of them but strength really has if anything is about to make me feel strength will do it which leads us into the hermit what is the hermit doing you know the hermit boy looks down and um, he's looking down and um, he's focusing and he's got his lantern lighting something I like to take that lantern and move it up. Let's let's move it up because let's see what we're looking at. Let's not hover our heads down here. Let's look up. Let's let's have that lantern shine up here so we can see what's going on up here, over there, so we can see what's up. We know what's at our feet, darn it. Make that lantern go over here. That's my only catch with him. You know, I, I, there's other tarot cards um, that show the hermit in all different ways, but realistically. Um, it's taking time, the reason why he's looking down is he's taking time to be by himself and in his own thoughts. And it's so important, sometimes we reach out to people and, and we want to talk to people and about our problem or, or, or a decision we want to make and we, um, we don't know what to do. We'll even reach to someone reading our tarot cards and say, you know what, I need to know what to do. And I'll guarantee you, if that hermit comes up, that's a perfect sign that you're not supposed to ask anybody what to do. That you have the answer, you just need to look inside yourself. And sometimes looking inside yourself is the best place to look. Because you know, people don't always have the correct answers for you. You know, they just don't. Someone might want you to do A and you need to do B. And so you know what, the Hermit is an as important card as you're going through the journey because he does take you um, he does take you to, to be within yourself and to make those decisions by yourself. Not that you need to look at anything differently, not like the hangman, but he literally just needs to be himself. Then we have the wheel. And that's kind of nice. The wheel is like our, our ending beginning, always, always going, always moving, always movement, always. Just keeps moving us through the whole, um, through our life. Um, ebbs and flows, as we like to call it, it's um, just keeps moving. It's like the tide, you know, it just comes in and goes out, comes in and goes out. Things change. Things always change. So whether you're going through a great time in your life or a hard time in your life, knowing 
that those things are going to change. It doesn't mean that you're going to be going through a good time in your life and then you turn around and go through a bad time. What it does mean is that things move and they change. People around you change and differ. Your thoughts change and differ. As you grow, you change and differ. Everything changes. Everything's movement. It's constantly moving every day. I mean, every minute, every second, right? As a new second. So that never stops. That never stops. And as time moves, things are different, just automatically, even if you don't do anything, especially if you don't do anything. <laughs> so things will change. And I think that's an important message as we go through and we say, you know what? Things will change. Um, I'm not going to be here forever. You know, I'm, I'm really not. I'm, I'm just not. And then 11, justice. What is she bringing to us? Just that. The right and wrong. The right thing will happen. Whether it's what you want to happen or not, the right thing will avail. She's strong. She's, um, I don't look at her as the other women in the tarot, but she does have her place because there are times where we need to be shown right and wrong. Um, Sometimes what we want isn't necessarily the right thing for us as well. We can look at it and say, oh, you know, um, we, sorry, I got lost in the thought there, but it might not be wrong in general, like quote unquote wrong, but it just might not be right for us at the time. And, and also it does bring justice to things, you know. Um, sometimes we need to be told when someone's not being truthful with us and, and, and that's not good. I mean, it, the, the truth and being honest is the most important thing that can bring us forward. So that was 11, now we're on to 12, <laughs> which is the hangman. What the heck? What's he doing? Now you look at the card and go, oh my gosh, I'm going to cut you down with my sword. Poof. Um, it's just, I do say though, as, as someone that looks within their, their intellect, it makes sense to me. Um, it, it is a smart thing to do because so many people just look at sur uh, what's going on on the surface and they don't look, they don't, they don't, turn their view. They have their view and they look at it this way and they don't ever change. It's such an important message. The hangman is a more important message than a lot of the tarot cards. The hangman tells us, he specifically tells us, you need to look at it a different way. You mean he, in a lot of decks he's hanging upside down. Just take a different view. Step back. Look at it differently. Put yourself in someone else's shoes. Look at what they're going through. Um, I, I like this card because, too, it deals right with judgment. You know, we call, not judgment the card, but judging people. Um, you don't know. You can't judge. You can't do that. You don't know what someone's going through. And then, <laughs> you don't. And, and so the hangman is a calling. Hang yourself upside down. <laughs> not in that respect. But look at it differently. Really take the time and look at it differently. And then, we go... Because now that we're looking at things differently, oh, it takes us right into death. And the death card is a scary card. Don't get me wrong. I know that the death card is a scary card. Um, it definitely can be scary. You see that and you go, death. Um, but death is a cool card. And, and you're all going to go, ah, I don't want it. Okay, I've been through, I'm the queen. Remember, I, I've told you, I've been through really hard, hard times. But what death is, is being that, caterpillar and being in that chrysalis and then and then and only then do your wings appear transformation completely and totally now what the message of death is also though is getting there is not easy no one said it was easy it can't be easy to be that beautiful butterfly you're going to have to struggle a little bit and be a caterpillar for a while and, and, and then crumple up into a chrysalis um, and it's not a pretty sight, and it's not a pretty thing, until it, until how it comes that butterfly. Um, I identify with the butterfly. I identify with, um, I identify with the butterfly. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and yes, that's coming from the Queen of Swords. <laughs> um, I identify with that because um, I think it's important, 
And as being as the Queen of Swords, I have I have had my trials and tribulations. I've been through it. I've I've also had to come out. I will tell you I'm more cautious of it. Card number 14, and that is temperance. Temperance really has this way about her. I mean, I don't, I don't, um, being a sword, I don't have the wishy-washiness of temperance, and to me temperance is wishy-washy because she's, she's flowing fire and, and water, and fire and water, excuse me, um, make up your mind, you know, let's put a sword in there and we'll just cut right through that water and fire, but she really is about balance, and um, she's about balancing all of those things, but but at the same time, and I think this is where I don't really hit it off with her, is that it's the balance within, it's, it's balancing your emotions. Being a sword, I have intact emotions. I don't feel very often, so quite frankly, temperance kind of I think of that as, you know, just balancing your emotions, keeping your emotions in check. I would tell you why, why have too many emotions, but the other queens will tell you differently, I'm sure. Um, so, she is a balance of that. She, um, she's beautiful, and I wouldn't disregard her in any way, but um, she's not on top of my list, <laughs> being a sword person that I am. So 15, where does that take us? That takes us to <laughs> the devil. The devil, I put right along with the lovers. I mean, they, in a lot of cards you see the lovers in the devil card. Um, and I will tell you, the devil, <laughs> he does make sense to me because he does talk about addictions and what can happen when you're so focused on one thing that you don't let anything else in or anyone in depending on that thing that you're focused on. He has you trapped, he has you hostage, but I will tell you this, that you are usually only hostage to yourself. It's how you're taking it, how you're feeling it, and how you're seeing it. So take a minute to cut those chains loose from the devil because that's exactly what you need to do. The devil is making you believe that you're hostage. Ha! He is. And so if you ever feel trapped, if you ever feel like you can't get out of something, there's a way out. Is it easy? No. Um, not always. Now, on the other hand, the devil can call to us when we are not comfortable displaying the more sensual side of things. Um, society sometimes shies away from that, and so as um, the positive side to the devil, or the devil as far as action, can t ask you to quit your addictions and to move away from your addictions, but the devil can also ask you to not forget, not forget to enjoy some of those more sensual and sensuous parts of life. You know, the real fruit, um, you know, the Adam and Eve thing, it's okay to have that apple. It really, really is. It's, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to um, want these things, whether they're sensual or good tasting or whatever the case may be. Um, the, you know, all of those things that we, we can so easily get addicted to. So the warning from the devil is just a reminder, you know, taste the fruits. Open up your sensuality. Um, you know, have that piece of chocolate or have that glass of wine. But if you can't just have one and you can't say, and, and it leads to not being able to put away that chocolate or that glass of wine or, or that, that sensuous sexual thing, then maybe, maybe you need to cut those chains completely. And those are decisions that only you can make, of course. The devil leads us into the tower. The tower, I just heard recently, was built by humans. Humans! What do they know? What do they know? Don't they know that the tower is just going to come down when something bad happens? If you're not prepared for every little thing 
that happens along the way, the tower will crash, right? If you don't build it for an earthquake and an earthquake comes, it will crash. If you don't build it for a hurricane and a hurricane comes, it will crash. That's just life. Um, if you don't prepare, it will crash, whatever that may be. The other thing to remember with the tower is there is always, 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 always things in our life that um, are going to crash and burn. They just are. Things tumble. They have to. It's part of existence. It's part of human nature. It's part of growing up. It's also a reminder, though, that next time you'll know how to build that tower better. So if you lost money in the stock market, maybe the next time you invest, you'll invest it differently. Um, those type of things. I will tell you too, the tower is scary and we all have different views of the tower. Um, I hate to say this, but one of my views is, so what it falls? It wasn't meant to be, right? This, it falls, which means this is what's meant to be. And we are told to rebuild because that was not meant to be. Tower is a scary time. Uh, when it comes in, it is a scary time because it's not something that you've planned for. It happens. And normally it is. It's, it's something just falling and crushing and burning. Um, but, but part of me says it's how you exit and how you rebuild that really make, makes who you are as a person. When, when that tower crashes, how you handle it is whether you're going to see the star or not, which is coming next. And what a beautiful card the star is. I mean, golly, you can't ask for a better star or a better card. Um, even someone that thinks, and I am intellectual, but I do wish upon a star I do all the time. And I do want to be a star. Look at me, I'm here, I'm a star, right? I'm a star, I want to be a star. <laughs> and I do wish upon them, I absolutely do. And I do use them to guide me when I need to be guided because I'll t look at the North Star and say, where do I go from here? The star is something that it, it, it's so easy to define in our life. You know, it's, it, it's so much bigger than um, anything. You know, I just, the star, oh my gosh. Um, it gives us hope. It gives us faith. It reminds us to have hope and faith. I don't care how big of a sword you have, you need to have some kind of faith. It doesn't matter what that faith looks like to you, it just needs to be there to some degree. That star is so important. Then the moon. The moon casts shadows, and it casts a lot of shadows. I mean, have you ever been out at night, and like the moon, you like, look, and you, it's weird, is the shadow there, or there, or there? You don't know quite where that shadow is. And it is a specific reminder that <laughs> things aren't always as they appear. Is the moon full or is it half? I don't know. It's a perfect reminder. You could be hearing someone talk and you are trying to listen to them and they're saying something completely different than you're hearing. That moon is a direct reminder. Things aren't always as they appear. There's hidden mysteries everywhere we turn, everywhere we go. Now as the, like the tarot, we like hidden mysteries, but and, and us sleuths, we even like them more. But but don't always take things at face value, and that's what the moon is there to remind us of. And then, we get to the sun. The sun. <laughs> you know, the sun is really happiness. I mean, when you go outside and you feel the sun, and it, you know, that vitamin D just perks you up, and um, you can't deny that, even when you're a thinker, you know, that it feels good, and it makes you happy, and it makes you smile, it makes you warm, it makes you all of those things. Sunny days, we, we think of playing. Sunny days, we think of going out and playing. Sunny days, we're going to go take a picnic. We're going to go play in the pool. Um, sun reminds us of all of those wonderful, wonderful things. And that's what I like to think of when I see the card in the tarot, is I think of all of these beautiful, wonderful, happy things that happen when the sun's out. Not that when it's not there, it doesn't mean it's not going to come up the next morning. It's just a reminder of how happy things can be and how happy things are. Um, when we allow them to be the sun. Which then takes us to judgment. What's judgment? You know, what, what is judgment? Doesn't that sound rough? I have a couple ducks that say, no, it's not judgment. 
Um, judgment really is about looking, well, it's about rebirth too. Uh, some people call it the karma thing. Um, I do, even though I carry a sword, I do believe in karma to a degree. I do. Um, I think that we get what we deserve. I think that those hard times that I received, I did get because I knew that there would be something I could learn from them. Um, judgments about rebirth in the sense that things coming back around, maybe. Maybe things being reborn. Maybe your, your sense of adventure, your sense of intellect. All of a sudden, you're going to be reborn. Maybe I'll come back as the page of sorts. Um, that's what I think of as I look at judgment. I think of a lot as not judgment day as far as more here we are, but something's coming back around. We're, we're reliving something. We're being reborn in a lot of different senses. Um, I, I, I am a fan of judgment because I always want to be reborn. Um, when you go through hard things and if you learn through hard knocks, judgment is the card that says, yep, well now we're going to get a fresh start at it and we're going to do it again. And then finally, and oh so finally, the world. What does the world look like? You know, I mean, realistically, as we are um, going through the tarot and um, talking about the tarot and I'm telling you my version and how I look at the tarot, um, the world is that, that finality of the major arcana and as you can see that we touched almost every life area as we went through and um, the world brings it all together and it reminds us how successful we are and that when we see this card come up we say, you know what, this is a successful time, you've made it, you've done it you've survived. And if you haven't done anything else, but you've survived, then what else really matters? The other thing that the world brings us, and I'm going to go back into the sun, is being happy. A friend told me that um, being happy is important, and sometimes when you're a sword, and you're wielding your sword around and you're intellectual and, and you're a thinker and you think, think, think all the time, you forget that we cause our own happiness and unhappiness. We can be happy, we just have to find what makes us happy. So in ending this trip around the tarot and looking at it from an intellectual point of view, um, don't ever forget, although I am the queen of swords, don't ever forget your heart and your heart's desire, because that really will make the trip around the tarot a lot easier.